Harmonious Clan Podcast, Self-Esteem Series, Episode 1. So you really want to acknowledge their effort. So you start from something really easy for them. And then if they put in the slightest effort, you immediately reward them for the effort. You know, you praise them. You know what? It doesn't even matter if you got this right, but I'm so proud of you for even trying because I know, you know, taking that very first step to try and take a risk is the hardest thing. When your child's chaotic behaviors are running your life, when you're struggling to find practical solutions, and just when you feel you've reached the end of your rope, there comes Harmonious Clan Podcast, equipping you with the proven practical strategies we've developed over the years through our own experiences to bring you strategies that give you results, enabling you to nurture your child from outcast to outstanding, and your clan from chaos to harmony. Hi, I'm Louisa Kasha, author of Outcast Outstanding, the practical guide to understanding and addressing the drivers of your child's behavior. I'm actually an engineer by training, but today I engineer outside the box solutions for outside the box children. What I mean by outside the box children are those children who are very talented, very intelligent, and sometimes they do not fit into the box and the cookie cutter solutions just don't work with uh, those children. Many of them have different diagnoses and some of them don't. Some of the children may be on the autism spectrum. Some may have um, Asperger's, some may have ADHD, sensory processing disorders, and many of them do not have any diagnoses, but you know if you've got one of those children who are outside the box, you've read tons of parenting books, and none of those solutions really work for uh, your child. I have successfully brought a lot of children from outcast to outstanding. I personally have six children on my own, and many of them do have those special needs, which is how I ended up developing a lot of the strategies that I'm sharing with you here. Today, I want to talk to you about self-esteem. I have a child at the time he was three who went to a park, and there were these, um, there were these little stools, or I don't know what you call them, but they're raised platforms. Uh, separate from one another and you're supposed to uh, hop on them from one to the next so it's like hopping pads and raised pads that you hop from one to the next and you have to keep your balance and you have to step onto the right pad and keep stepping onto the right pad kind of a gross motor skill um, activity so but if you don't and you may fall off which is not a big deal I mean it's it's not that dangerous you just fall off and get back on so at the time this particular son of mine was three and he was he was pretty good with he was all right with his motor skills so I said hey let's let's go on that and he didn't go he was always every time we went to the park he was always avoiding that. He would go on the slide. He would go on all the other things, but he was always avoiding that particular part of it. So one day I encouraged him and I said, well, let's try that. And he said to me, um, he, he looked and he looked at it and he looked down on the floor with a very sad face. And he said, I can't do it. And I said, well, we haven't tried. How do we know? And he said, I know I can't do it. And it, the face was so sad and it was so hopeless and it was so much of a, I, I don't have to try. I just look at it and I know that I can't do it. But the reality is those were, those were just for a child like him. I mean, it, there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to do it. But I think when he looked at the fact that you have to step from one to the next, He's already thinking, well, I can't step from one to the next. And I want to talk to you about the underlying issue for a child not even wanting to try something because they have very low self-esteem and probably in the past, everything that they have tried, there's a high chance of failure experience. So when it comes to, well, let's try something, they don't want to try it. Um, it was very sad to me to see, to see my child thinking that lowly of himself, thinking that he is so incapable that he can't try it, he can't do it, and he's not going to humiliate himself to do it. So I, I, do, I do realize that a lot of children are in that position where they, 
They, there's something that if they try, you know, they can get, but they will not do it because they don't want to take the risk of failing. And they have had too much failures in their lives that they don't want to take the risk. It's just too much. And plus, most things that I have tried, I have not succeeded. And so I know that I cannot do it. You can't have a child walking around thinking that I know that I can't do it. Uh, we need to completely change that. We need to bring them to a success paradigm to where their experiences are more of a success rather than failure. On success paradigm, I talked a lot. I uh, devoted a whole section, uh, three or four chapters on that in my book, Outcast Outstanding, which you can get on Amazon. But today I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about maybe starting to build a little bit of that, starting to build a little bit more of the self-esteem. There's several strategies that I want to share with you. Um, the number one is you want to look for the low hanging fruits. So a lot of times, you know, these children look at something and it's like, well, yeah, I can try, but then I may not be able to do it. You want to look for the low hanging fruits. Those are the ones that are down below, very easy to grab. And to them, it doesn't matter if it's a high fruit or if it's a low hanging fruit, but if they got it, they got it. That's that is success under their belt. How they look for low hanging fruits um, in their life every day here self-esteem one is you want to look for low hanging fruits okay so so how do you how do you look for them it's in your everyday life at home i mean the easiest way would be at home any chores that they can do depending on the age and the stage of a child i mean maybe he can go and take the trash out maybe he can go and take the recycle bin out maybe he can go and dump all the recycled into the outside bin uh, maybe he can wipe down the table i mean there's there's a lot of very small tasks that's in our everyday household it's part of our everyday living that we are not really having our children do as much of um and when we do it's really not a big deal but i want you to actually take those opportunities let have your child do them and really really praise them and give them those experiences of i can do it i can do it you know would you would you would you wipe down the table and they wipe it down oh wow it's shiny there's no crumbs there's nothing else on it wow well done i mean it, it does it may not seem like it means so much to you but it means a lot to a child who's going through every day between school and home, homework, this, that, going from failure to failure to failure. When he has those little things that he can build success upon, it, it makes, it makes, um, it means a lot for those children. Uh, look for even little things like, you know, let's offload all the groceries when you first come home. Um, let's, uh, can you help me get this bag in there or whatever it may be, sort out the things in the pantry. Look for the tasks that you know your child can easily do every day in the household. So every day in the household, you can be building your child's self-esteem without him or her even realizing. Number two, um, is that you want to acknowledge their effort, acknowledge effort. So when your child tries something or every time your child does something, um, they are keeping track of whether or not they've been successful, whether or not they scored, whether or not they got it. And they're keeping the black and white score of themselves you want to start erasing that whole black and white mentality because if they if they aim it they don't hit target now that's the end of it and they're they are registering in their head that that's one another failure try so you instead you want to really put the focus on the effort it is not whether or not you get it right but it's the effort so for example i I have done a whole lot of tutoring in my life, specifically in math because I was an engineering major and uh, I was quite strong in math. And I kind of have this way of working with children where, um, you know, I make, I make complex math problems seem very simple to them and they're able to get it a lot quicker. So I used to work a whole, a whole lot with children, 
um, in the mass tutoring arena. And a lot of kids, parents that end up calling me are those that are always failing. And there's a ton of kids that don't do very well in math. What I notice in common is typically those kids come and they look at a problem, they toss it, toss their hands, and it's like, no, I can't do it. I already know it. I'm not even going to try. Um, so you really want to acknowledge their effort. So you start from something really easy for them. And then if they put in the slightest effort, you immediately reward them for the effort. You know, you praise them. You know what? It doesn't even matter if you got this right, but I'm so proud of you for even trying because I know, you know, taking that very first step to try and take a risk is the hardest thing. So you're acknowledging their effort and slowly you want to grow them into, into acknowledging their efforts for themselves, knowing that, okay, so I'm going to kick this ball and it, you know, okay, it, it, it doesn't really matter if I kick this in, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. So I'm, I'm going to shoot the hoop and I'm going to try it. And it doesn't matter how many I actually makes it in, but it's the effort of me doing that. There are a lot of historical models, biographies of people that they, that have tried many, many, many times, right? Edison, for example, is somebody who has tried many, many, many times and finally got it. But all of the effort people aren't really looking into. You want to really zoom into the effort because that's what counts. So as a parent, I know we often we look at the results. You know, when parents call me, it's like, well, you got a C, got a D. Oh, that's not acceptable. But OK, well, let's try take little baby steps at a time. Let's first of all, look at the effort because a lot of those children that are getting D's and C's and F's, they're not even trying. They're not even putting their effort and that's their biggest problem. So you really want to start acknowledging any effort that they put in instead of the result of what they get. Um, when you look at the results a whole lot, it gets children to develop a self-critical uh, point of view, which is good in the perspective of um, improvement, but it becomes detrimental for a child who is low self-esteem prone and beating up themselves kind of who has that kind of issue. So really acknowledge their effort. You've been listening to Harmonious Clan Podcast with Marco and Louisa. Learn more about Harmonious Clan at www.harmoniousclan.com for information on resources including books, educational podcasts, a supportive community, courses, and one-on-one -on -one consulting. Harmonious Clan, enabling you to nurture your child from outcast to outstanding and your clan from chaos to harmony.